the transition from co-star to uh, series regular, for me, again, it's not science, it's not black and white, it's not a meritocracy. I just kept showing up. I kept going to acting class. I kept going to auditions. And so one day someone said yes. Listening to Inside Acting, a podcast dedicated to demystifying the inner and outer game of success in the entertainment industry. I'm AJ Meyer. And I'm Trevor Elgott. And coming up in episode 286 today, part two of AJ and Jasmine's chat with actor, theater producer, and former <laughs> plant technician. I love that. Terry Reeves. In part two, Terry dives into her life as a level four Brazilian jiu-jitsu martial artist. Level four brown belt. Sorry, that's that's my bad. Impressive already. Uh, How she chose to deal with a very specific media storm that gathered around her work, uh, specifically on one of her shows, and what it's like to be a consistently working series regular. What's that like? All of that and more coming up in episode 286. Support for this episode of Inside Acting comes from Rehearsal Pro, the current version of Rehearsal, the essential app for actors. And it's available now in the iTunes App Store. If you want to learn your lines, be off book for your auditions, explore your character, make stronger choices, and do a whole lot more, go right now to Rehearsal.pro slash IAP to learn about all the great new features in this newest version of Rehearsal. Guys, I use it all the time for almost every single audition. It helps me get off book. It is the groundbreaking app designed by actors for actors. That's Rehearsal.pro slash IAP. Dude, it has been a while since we've done one of these in person, and I was watching you do that that announcement, and you were doing like this, like you were like DJ record scratching with your hands. You were like, wicka, wicka, wicka. I, have, I am Italian. I cannot help it. I, okay, I, no, but there they I, are I talk with my hands even when you're not around. So for, uh, you guys might notice that again, the audio is a little bit sort of different than it usually is. Uh, that's because we are. Between shifts at our thrival job, making it happen on a Saturday afternoon in Culver City with the Zoom H5N set up on top of a Jenga box <laughs> in the break room, man. But this is how we roll. We want to make sure we get these uh, these episodes out. And, That's right. And uh, I think, you know, when we first started this thing so long ago, I was, I was pretty, like, committed to, like... Just it's got the audio quality's gotta be awesome. Like it's just gotta be like that is a no sacrifice thing. And the older I get, the more I'm like, I, I wanna maintain that as much as possible, but I'm far more interested in just getting the work done. Cause I was putting like eighty percent of my energy and thought time and, and mental capacity into like it's gotta be perfect. And it was just it's like I didn't need to be that that perfectionist about it, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I have to, I mean, I think I've said this on the show before and I've certainly said it to you in person, but I do want to thank you for, for being that sort of focused and diligent in the beginning because I really do think it, it set us apart. In fact, I know it set us apart because I didn't, uh, I've, I've actually heard this from listeners. Yeah. We've gotten a few comments <clears> over the years. Said, oh, I love, I love the audio quality and you guys do, you know, because if you listen, there's a lot of pot, people just start up podcasts out there and, and they don't focus on it and then it ends up you know, being, uh, I don't want to say unlistenable to, yeah. but <clears throat> at the very least difficult to listen to, you know? And, uh, and, and, and then as we sort of grew and I remember talking to Nelson about this, our, our former producer back in the day. And he was, he, he used to tell us content is king, content is king, content is king. And the content has also stay, stayed, you know, consistent. So if there's a weird episode where you have to call in on a phone or I'm in the middle of Yosemite and I call in on a phone or whatever it is, it's cool. It's, uh, you know, our, our listeners have stuck with us. And this, the H5N, is what we used to record that little segment when you and I were, were camping in the, yeah. in the Western yeah. Sierras. And, and it's been through many an interview with us. So it, it's yeah. a handy little device. And, you know, I, I do, you know, whenever it's possible, we try to, like, really step it up and use the great condenser microphones. Um, but sometimes it's not. And we just want to get this, get you know, get the work done. It's all about doing the work. Uh, so let's do a quick catch up here, man. What is new in your world? I mean, there's the Unite for Strength SAG AFTRA. Um, uh, you just like uh, watch me type. Yeah, it I did into watch you type it in the outline. Uh, 
the the yeah the unite for strength uh, um, what do you call it pan uh, what would you call well, it UFS is a is a slate thank you slate um, that was the word I was looking yeah for. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I don't want us to sort of turn the podcast into like this political platform or anything like that but I do want to mention just personally because it is my I don't know my life and my choice I have chosen to run as a delegate for the uh, convention coming up in uh, October and I'm running with the Unite for Strength uh, slate with uh, the likes of Ben Whitehair and Jen Levin, our production coordinator. Um, <clears throat> David Jen, Storch, 17th. Yeah, David Storch, 17th. Woody Schultz, all these like former yeah. uh, guests we've had. Jen actually did the math the other day and she counted like 10 or so yeah. uh, either IAP quote unquote staff or former IAP guests were all running on the Unite for Strength uh, slate. So, I, like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but if you are a member of the union and you're going to vote, you're going to see those names on there, and I'll, I'm you know, obviously going to ask for your vote right here, right now, but that's about all I'm going to say about it uh, for the most part, because like I said, I don't want our podcast to be a political platform, and we're actually turning away guests right now who want to use the podcast as a way of sort of getting out the vote for themselves. Um, <clears throat> we're just telling people uh, as a bl sort of blanket statement that we're not bringing on people who are running during election season. So I'm making an exception for myself, I guess, right now, but, uh, <laughs> but that's it. Then, then we're done. And this will be yeah. the, sort of the first and last that, that, I, that I talk about it. You know, I've been getting so much literature in the mail the physical mail and in my email mm, yeah. about this. It feels like this election just feels more noisy than any other union election ever, possibly, aside from when the merger was sort of happening. Yeah. So can, can you, for our listeners, just sort of dumb down what the major issues are in a minute or two and just sort of give us a, a general oh. wash of, like, here's what's going on, here's what we need to be aware of? Uh, I'll do my best. I am not as good as, uh, as, as the likes of Ben White here and Jen Levin at, at doing this, but I will, I will do my best. First of all, the reason that it, there, it seems like there's a lot more noise right now is because it's sort of like this perfect storm where um, the TV theatrical contract was up for a vote um, for ratification, and then the the... the uh, a lot of the board position. Well, every two years they have this convention uh, where the, the constitution of the union gets changed and modified and stuff. So that's coming up. So there's all these delegates that need to be elected to go to the convention to actually vote on these various things. Um, <clears throat> plus, you have the the sort of the, the the board positions, the national board, the local board in LA, etc. So it's like this perfect storm of all of these different things going on at once. Um, obviously, no one wanted party politics to be a part of our union, but what happened was is there was so there was there was enough resistance to the inevitability of this merger that m the majority of the membership thinks was was and is a good idea that the Unite for Strength folks five years ago had to do something to kind of unify the voice of the merger. Um, and that's where that slate actually came from. That's how it came into being, was so that they could encourage the membership to, to work on tying the, the merger together and, and, and voting that into being. Um, so it's weird to me <clears throat> that the, uh, I'm not even going to say the name, the other slate um, and a lot of other people are, are still, still to this day, five years later, calling it the disastrous merger. They're still using that terminology. And um, it's sort of indicative of a lot of their mm, thought processes when it comes to all the, 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 these things because a lot of their concerns have to do with the changes that are happening with or without us in the industry. No matter what you do, or I do, Trevor, or uh, any of our listeners do, or anybody who's a member um, in um, uh, anybody who's involved in, in the union, streaming is here to stay, right? The internet isn't going anywhere. Um, the, the 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 idea of web series and new media and all the all these things, they're not going anywhere. The way that things used to be 
<clears throat> with the major networks, the major cable networks, and commercials, and, and all of that stuff, it, it's, it's never going to look like that again. And a lot of the arguments and positions and wants of the, of the quote-unquote other side are about that. They, they want things to sort of go backwards or stay where they are or get to a place where it's never going to be again. Um, they have other concerns as well, um, uh, many of them legitimate. I'm not saying that that's the only one. But, if, but since you said, can I sort of dumb it down to like the, the sort of base thing, that's what I see when I look at the landscape is um, there's, a, there's this idea of like we, we need to move forward or we're going to lose negotiating position versus the, the producers. Um, or we can, you know, dig our heels in um, and be the sort of stubborn mule and try to keep things the way that they are. But I, I think between the two, I, I don't think being the mule is a, a stronger position for our performers union to negotiate from, if that makes sense. We've got to be mm-hmm. sort of pliable and, and able to grow and evolve, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. you know. Because okay. um, we've talked about you know all this on the on the show for for years, watching yeah. the landscape change. I mean, you know, we've talked about we've joked about how this podcast might someday be this really interesting time capsule of of how our careers and our lives sort of grew and morphed and changed. But if anybody in ten, twenty, thirty years from now comes back and listens to our podcast from episode one to episode whatever, they're going to be like wait, what's a web series? You know what I mean? <laughs> there's going to be a day where like, yeah. there's going to be like, they're going to be like, wait, what's ABC? What, what mm. is CBS? I don't, uh, what, what, what does network television mean? Like, that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. That sounds like wow. a ham radio. That's so you know trippy I mean? to think about. Yeah, yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to, because, yeah. because things change and technology grows and, and there's going to be, um, some really amazing things that, that, that come out of it and so I think it's better we're better positioning ourselves if we're growing with the times um, <clears throat> as opposed to trying to keep things the same mm. that makes sense if people want to uh, sort of educate themselves further on this uh, what do you think is a good resource they can go to to uh, get a mostly unbiased uh, take on, on the different issues on the table well it would be Difficult to get an unbiased take because the people who are running the union right now are all, not all, but mostly uh, in the Unite for Strength slate, um, including including Gabrielle Carteris, who we had on the show. Um, uh, I, I would say I've only been sent one sort of dissenting opinion uh, article. Happy to post it on our website. I haven't had a chance to read through all of it myself, but... Um, I've been trying to come at it with as much um, compassion and listening as possible. And um, I've gotten amazing feedback from the person it matters the most to me, which is Jasmine. I'm saying, saying like, I- I'm so proud and inspired by the way that you've been handling some of the like dissenting mm. voices. Because a lot of people right now or I mean a lot of people are very passionate about what's going on right now and so um, uh, people from both sides are being trolled like crazy on the internet um, by some people who are uh, perhaps uh, a little too passionate in that they're letting the uh, uh, attacks become a little bit crazy and personal and um, there have been board meetings where people have had to be um, taken out by security and stuff like there's been some really crazy stuff happening so uh, I get I get being passionate. I don't understand being pa- passionate to the point of needing to be you know escorted out by security. That doesn't that's just not who I be. Um, <clears throat> but I'm trying to I, I'm sort of practicing on the trolls, if you will, the people who've been trolling <laughs> my. I've been practicing on the trolls, the people who've been trolling my social media in um, in the way that I I would like to be able to listen to. A, uh, a Trump supporter, for instance, mm-hmm. and really sort of seek to understand. Um, 
practice, so. practice on the trolls. Uh, that's that's my takeaway right now. Oh, practice okay, on the good. Trolls. I'm glad that's your one takeaway. <laughs> that's going to make me sound no, like there's a complete jerk. There's, there's <clears throat> a nugget of, of golden wisdom in that somewhere that I am, need to suss out still, but that's there's something there. Hmm. No. Okay. Yeah, so so if you the, the thing is, if you go to sag After's website, there's a ton of information there. Most of it written up by people who are running in the Unite for Strength uh, slate because that's who's you know on the board and, and, yeah. and sort of running things right now. Um, you can go to their website as well. They have a website, and then um, the other slate has a website as well, and um, uh, and sort of their concerns. So it might not be. There might not be a centralized like I, there might not be a good answer to your question. There might not be like a centralized place to get all this information. You might actually have to just go out and try to like suss out mm -hmm. the information by by reading it. Um, one of the problems is that a lot of the information out there is actually misinformation um, and sort of misleading in order to rile up the the misguided passions of of people and get them to, for instance, vote no on the TV theatrical contract would just pass, that vote is already over, um, and then vote for, for particular people in the, in the election as well. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's not easy. It, it very much sounds and, and is mirroring um, national politics. I was going to say, so you're saying there's fake news. Nah, yes, alternate facts. Support for this episode of Inside Acting is also brought to you in part by VioToGoGo.com, the award-winning voiceover training system and winner of Backstage's Reader's Choice Award for Best Voiceover Training four years in a row. Visit VioToGoGo.com slash start to get access to a free getting started in voiceover online class that'll teach you everything you need to know to get started adding voiceover to your acting portfolio. That's V-O as in voiceover. V-O, the number two, go, go dot com slash start. And we have a, a question that we're excited to respond to, uh, but we're actually going to kind of punt it to the next episode because we want to get to this interview with Terry. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm so excited uh, about part yeah. two. I mean, you haven't even heard it yet, but uh, there's just some really juicy stuff in here. We we dive much deeper into the work uh, in this one um, and talk about you know what life is like working um, as an actor as much as Terry does. So uh, I've been really excited to, to kind of uh, uh, share the second half as much as I was to share the first half. So um, enjoy this, guys. We'll catch you on the other side. Just, uh, this is um, I'm, I'm sorry to go so practical with this but I'm just curious in terms of if there's someone else out there who wants to maybe pick this up as a way of you know supporting themselves do you do you bring clients like into your house do you do you meet at a gym how does it work in terms of your um, your having the equipment and stuff you need to, to actually execute so uh, cool good, good question. Um, three, I meet wherever is convenient for the client and me. So I do have where the place where I teach classes also has a private studio that I can rent for $15 to bring clients in. And then I charge them whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So I usually include the $15 in their charge. I will make house calls. I'll meet at parks with these people or they'll come to my apartment complex. Most of them do. Cause that's the cheapest thing for them mm -hmm. because my apartment complex has a gym and they've given me the okay to use it. That's wow. Fantastic. Wow. It's it's amazing. Yeah. But again, like if you want to meet at someone's house or the park, you just you have to invest maybe a couple hundred bucks and my trunk is full of yeah. crap. Dumbbells, yeah. TRX, mm -hmm. resistance bands, nice. medicine balls. This is full of crap. And so yeah. you want to train at a park, I can whip out my boxing gloves, my mitts and we can hit for an hour and you're done. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Which I've done before. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah. uh, speaking of uh, uh, boxing gloves, <laughs> when yeah. and how did you get into the uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu thing? Not that you <laughs> use boxing gloves, but I'm just thinking about the fighting. I do box. Uh, yeah, I, I took boxing classes, but that was more for fun. So jiu-jitsu, um, this is, uh, uh, again, there's two answers to this. I thought I was going to take jiu-jitsu class because my agent eventually said, gosh, you're booking so much as the girl who dies and cries. You play a great victim. People see, and I was like, excuse you? I want to be a strong female. Mm-hmm. Right? Remember what I came in saying to them. Yeah. And so, so I went, well, they don't believe me. I'm going to convince them. I'm going to go take martial arts for a month. I'll put it in my special skills section. Right? <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck jujitsu is. It's just the closest, <laughs> it's the closest martial arts studio to my apartment. I'm like, I'll go there. And then, I, you know, the universe gifted me with this hmm. because it's, there's no punching or kicking. So it's all grappling. So your face is never messed up. Thank you, acting. Um, so, and it's the best self-defense and it's geared towards people who are small, fragile, mm. frail. So the smaller opponent, hello, often mm. females, learn how to use giant people's or aggressive people's mistakes and weight against them. Hmm. So, so I'm learning things that I can pass on to other females or other people in general about um, self-protection and uh, all of that business. Yeah. And it's really fun. You're rolling around. Hey, you can live spar every time. So you're rolling around in pajamas, beating each other up. And for some reason, that brings you close together. And it feels like another family that I found. So um, instead of just going for one month, I'm, I'm eight and a half years into it. I just wow. got my fourth stripe on my brown belt. Uh, wow. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to stop anytime soon. No. Wow. So eight and a half years. Wow. So what's what's next after brown? Is that black? Like you'll be like, yeah, you'll be a master. Ooh. You have to move to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> all the Brazilians moved here. They're huh. all in L.A. in Southern California. They're really? all here. Yeah. 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 My instructor is uh, Hamulo Bahal, but spelled with all R's because people who speak Portuguese or, uh, yeah, is it Portuguese? Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Yes, I'm Portuguese. Yes. Thank you. Portuguese. Yeah. So ha- has it translated to, I mean, you said it earlier that you have been playing sort of these stronger, I don't need anybody uh roles on screen mm-hmm. do, do you feel like the i mean has the jujitsu do you think do you see the direct correlation for yourself in 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 the roles did you succeed essentially at uh at at, at turning the turning the wheel so to speak I, I mean you never know why something happens and uh, but i have started playing stronger females so i don't know if it's because i had jujitsu or or what it was i have no idea why but I'm just going to accept the gift because I've gotten to play women um, that beat people up or to protect themselves or stand up for the, the underdog or aren't afraid to speak their minds. But I, it, And strong female doesn't mean aggressive or um, physical either. Strong females are women that are thinking and vulnerability can be strong. So I've also just gotten to play more complex women, uh, more well-rounded humans, and uh, which I consider s- strong. Um, so the writing is getting better out there. The opportunities are just getting better out there. I have no idea if it's connected to jujitsu or not, but um, but I'm just I'm grateful for it. This business is so logical. And step one, two, three, <laughs> Terry. Why can't you make the connection? <laughs> it makes complete sense. It's one equals one in this business. Everything oh, is Lord. black and white. Right? It's black and white. Um, and thank you, AJ, for that correction. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah i don't know that was kind of, I'm, I'm just realizing how stupid that question was that i asked you um <clears throat> oh no i liked it <laughs> like do you see the cor- correlation to anything i yeah, should nope. never ask a question that has the word correlation in it on this podcast again you learned um, a valuable lesson today yes i did i'm gonna go i'm gonna go s- sit in a corner and think about what i've done um <laughs> so uh, i this is this is cool because this this allows us to sort of transition into the specifics of your career and your your roles. There are a few that like I'm dying to ask you about. Uh, one of which is uh, Jasmine is a huge huge Wizard of Oz fan. It is her favorite film ever. Uh, she can not only quote every word from it, but she can also sing the score, sing as, the score as she goes. <laughs> Like the score that happens behind the lines. So I wanted to ask you about the the stint on Once Upon a Time, where you played a, a grown up 
Dorothy Gale. And there's so much to talk about here, uh, sure. including the fact that it was the first LGBT, I think I read this, it was the first LGBTQ yep. relationship on that show where you... On ABC ha- Network, I think. On oh a my major... God, wow. Okay. I mean, don't quote me on that, but it was like a... There <clears throat> yeah, was a it was a big deal. Backlash. It was a big deal. It yeah. was a big deal, yeah. And, and, so, and you had a relationship with uh, Little Red Riding Hood, right? I did. Yeah, so anyway, I, I, I'm like, when I read all of this, my mind was like, exploding because I was like that's amazing and I was curious to ask you as a as a the actor right you're just showing up to to do the work it's a it's a it, it is a job for you and you're kind of in the in the middle of it but then that means that I feel like maybe you were in the eye of the storm so could you talk about what that was like or if it was a big deal at all maybe it was just like whatever and 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 nothing came of it but did you? What did you experience? Um, I guess media wise or or attention wise from from that time. Uh, well, when I first got the job, I just went, "Wow, what an amazing opportunity!" Yeah. Um, and so it just it becomes about gratefulness for the work, and you go and you show up on set, and no one's really talking about anything except how to make this story come alive, mm. and so you're just as truthful as you can be in the in the role, right? Mm. Um, and on the side, because that, that's our job as actors to tell a truthful story. So all the rest of the business about, um, you know, the, the relationship being an LGBT and all of that came later, um, after, after we got to do the, the shoot. And, and quite frankly, I was, um, glad that I was a part of that. Uh, I'm glad that I got to be, have a little, you know, toe in what I hope is a change in the representation of those kinds of relationships on television. Um, I have a close family member that is, uh, you know, responded. She was just grateful that that was on TV. And it was a personal thing for me too, just to be able to, um, to be a part of a storyline like that. Uh, As far as, you know, backlash goes or the media following the airing of the episode, I, um, I've learned uh, because of some other experiences uh, with other shows, to just not read that shit online, just just don't 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 go to those pages on Facebook where people are like, I hate this, I love this, I hate this, I love. I mean that that's not my business. That's yeah. their business. That's mm. their own story. That's their personal reaction. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think that's my final answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's great. I mean, yeah. uh, many of. Uh, myself or many of our listeners don't you know they don't necessarily have that experience and you don't there's no way to know unless you've actually unless you're actually in that situation so to have um what is essentially advice on that you know front is is invaluable because you have you have had that that kind of experience uh where i could you know receive negative media you mean um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and, and what's crazy about this whole thing is playing like there's so if you separated out all the parts of this situation, they would all be really intriguing. Like just mm-hmm. the just the fact that you got to play Dorothy Gale. Hmm. That, Dude, grew up, grew up on Wizard of Oz, right? right? <laughs> like that. Just separate that part of it. Um, yeah. And then there's the, the the sort of practical. I'm an actor who booked an awesome job thing on a successful television show, um, <clears throat> and I'm a girl who loves physicality. And Dorothy's running around through the forest with weapons. Yeah, yeah. You know, hurting, love that. Yeah. So there's uh, all these different elements to it that, uh, yeah. when separated out, each one would have been amazing. But then put them all together, and it's yeah. uh, such an interesting, crazy experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and that wasn't your first. You know, rec- you had multiple sort of recurring uh, roles before that on, on a couple of soaps, on um, Battleground, Chicago Fire is is one thing you're 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 most known for. What yeah. um, <laughs> I have sort of two questions uh, uh, around this. One is, <clears throat> what do you feel like was the transition, um, or uh, I guess the the stepping stones to get from those co star roles that you're booking yourself with with casting director workshops to these recurring roles that's that's the first question and then the second question is when you're actually in role 
what do you find are the biggest differences between you know being sort of a day player and being a recurring besides the obvious of like well I'm on set more the transition from co-star to uh, series uh, series regular for me again it's not science it's not black and white it's not a meritocracy I just kept showing up I kept going to acting class I kept going to auditions I kept um, doing my life and I kept going to you know prepared and ready and so one day someone said yes uh, the, the person that said yes first was battleground. And it's this tiny little web series. They paid us $900 a week, uh, and to go live in Wisconsin for three months. And it was, but it was amazing. Yeah. I got to be an actor. So I said yes to jobs that that's not a sexy job. That's not, you know, compared to what you make on a television set in LA, we lived in like a, a bed bug infested motel, oh, quite frank, for reals. Uh, for three months in the, the butt ass cold of Wisconsin, wearing clothes because the show was set in summertime <laughs> it, while it's snowing. Uh, anyway, but then so then I have a, you know, experience under my belt. Um, and then I go to auditions that I get into more rooms that way because I have some stuff on my tape. Mm. And then I book Chicago Fire. But again, it was just I showed up to Chicago Fire, that audition, the audition hallway. There was like 35 girls and a waiting list after that. I was like, there's no fucking way in hell. So I just walk into the room. I do my work. I show up as much as I can as an, as my artist self. And then I left and I was like, well, at least I had a great time for 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, on to the next. And then they called me and they're like, you got the job. And I went, excuse you, what? Uh. So, I mean, you just keep showing up until someone says yes. And they'll keep, and they'll start saying yes more and more. Once someone says yes, then they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. People need other people to say yes first, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, so it was, it was a combination of, you know, hard work and showing up and luck. Um, being on set m- more regularly is the thing. Uh, you're on set more short, but you're also in the rhythm of acting. Mm. So um, which is such you, you're like riding. You're on a train and you don't get off the train when you're doing those little guest players or those, you know, you audition once a month then you can atrophy in the middle if you're not in the, in class. And so it's your engine is always revving, which I love because you feel like you're in your actor pants. Yeah. Um, and then you, and you get comfortable because you get to know the person behind the camera. You get to know the person doing your hair. You get to know it, it's just, it becomes that community. Mm. You become part of that team, which it's, for some reason I developed a huge love for. It's probably theater school or um, j- yeah. jujitsu family. I just, and and yeah, so you get personally invested in the thing that you're creating, um, more so than like showing up trying to do your job for one day and then and then bailing. Which and, you know, there's a gift in that too. But um, there, end of end of ramble. <laughs> <laughs> end of ramble. Uh, well, we'll, I, we'll probably we'll we'll have to have you back on because uh, I definitely want to ask you more about that the mm-hmm. the the on on set experience, the series regular experience. And also, sure. I didn't get a chance to ask you about the uh, the theater community and your your oh sure um, yeah your theater. We could company, even hire so. you, dude. Yeah, You're yeah. in L.A. <laughs> I am in L.A. and I've done a, a lot of L.A. theater. And it's funny. I I, w- I I went to the website um, for the theater company, and I recognized so many of my friends who I've actually been in shows with right on the just the oh. photos going through on your homepage. So um, it's pretty oh, funny. Oh, AJ. Okay, <laughs> we have to talk again. <laughs> All right, will do. Um, so I want to get to our final two questions, so I can let you go. The first one is, do you feel like this industry or this, this life path um, as, a, as an artist, as an actor, do you feel like it chose you or you chose it? Oh, well, that's a fascinating question. Uh, blah, 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 both. Uh, You're allowed gosh. to say both. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, uh, both. Um, I think originally I wanted it for the wrong reasons. Uh, I needed validation. I needed to be seen and I wanted to say someone to say yes. Um, so I came at it for uh, uh, quite for an unhealthy reason, but also I had stories to tell and I had life to give. And I, so that was part of my mix. So I had unhealthy and healthy reasons for coming to it. Um, and I think the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, uh, has a design for us and it brought me to it. It brought me to this art on purpose because it had, God, universe, whatever, had something to teach me and had s- people to teach through me. 
So it also came to me. Um, does that make any sense? Absolutely. Perfect sense. Perfect sense. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right. Second question is yes. if you could boil down all of your experience, all of your years of training and life on set into one piece, one nugget of advice to give, what would that be? Oh my goodness. One, oh my goodness. It's a lot of um, pressure. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's important. I just, uh, live, live open hearted. Just live wholehearted. Just say yes. Mm. Wholehearted living. And it hurts and it, mm. and it's vulnerable and you'll get, you'll get, you know, punched and thrown this way and that, but you'll feel everything. And you'll get to go on a ride instead of hiding from whatever uh, is out there. Even the hard stuff you got. I mean, it, it just mm -hmm. it shapes you. It builds you. Mm -hmm. um, makes you smarter, stronger. So, yeah, wholehearted living is uh, what I learned is the, the right living for me, even though it's harder. It's better. Was that, does that answer your question? Yes. That's okay. beautiful. Yes. Wow. Uh, Terry, you're speaking if, to me. Yeah, you're speaking <laughs> our, you're definitely speaking our language. A lot of a lot of what you uh, shared with us today is speaking uh, speaking our Especially language. Especially the cursing for me. <laughs> <laughs> speaking our language personally, also speaking the language of, of the podcast. Um, I'm so <clears throat> grateful. You guys asked fantastic questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being on. If people want to find out more about you, Terry, um, I, I, I found your, your website just through a quick Google, but um, yeah. are you on uh, the Twitters, the Facebooks? If people want to you know, follow your, your journey, um, how can people find out more about you? I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I have my normal page, which is just Terry Reeves, and then I have my fit pages, which is Terry Reeves Fit. As, where I post personal training stuff. Um, so, and I, if you send me a personal message, I'll respond because I love yeah. chatting with people. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll put links to all of that, uh, in the show notes for this episode. And, um, I started after, uh, Jasmine told me about you, I started following you on, uh, I think it's Instagram and uh, mm. the stuff he posts on there is fantastic. I, I love okay. the uh, you doing uh, push-ups by the copy machine the other day. That was pretty fun. Ah! <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you again, Terry. And um, like I said, we'll, we'll have to have you back on to ask you about the other stuff. But uh, thank you so oh, much for, I, for spending I time with us. Oh, thank today. you, guys. It, it, was a, it was a pleasure. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed part two of AJ and Jasmine's chat with Terry Reeves. Uh, I, I, I haven't heard the full segment yet as of this recording, but you were telling me beforehand earlier today about that media storm. And I just, I, number one, I love that that was, the, that was the impetus for the media storm. And number two, I love how she handled it. It's not my job. It's not my job. It's it's not like my I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to read it. I know. Uh, I can't remember. We had somebody on the show once who talked about the fact that they never read reviews. Like if they do a mm -hmm. if they do a theater piece or something like that, like they never read uh, reviews. I, I'm kind of weird. Maybe I'll change as I grow and, and do other things. But I'm kind of weird. I kind of I I, I I I tend to like devour <laughs> reviews. Like as soon as they come out, I like want to read them and then share them with other people and stuff like that. Um, Maybe I've been lucky enough to be in good shows, and they've been mostly good reviews. I have no idea, but uh, yeah. uh, I have yet to be so stung by one mm -hmm. that uh, that I don't want to read them at all. And I and I never had. And I'm not saying that everybody who doesn't read them has been stung. A lot of people just never read them to begin with. But that's just how I I feel about the the, the sort of the media thing. So she just was like, "Yep, yeah, it's not my job. Like I'm not gonna." It was just uh, so cool. Love so it. cool. Love it. Um, maybe that's a really interesting question, some homework for our listeners. If you've, if you've ever been, uh, if, if your sort of viewpoint on either reviews or media attention or something has shifted because of media or because of attention or because of a review or something like that, maybe you write in with your story or call in with your story. Dude, I would love to hear from people about that. Wouldn't that be an interesting... That would be really cool. Sort of the... Um, you know, entertainment industry meets meet, meets uh, journalism kind of yeah. thing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, there's such a blend right now. Oh, we were just talking about 
what a world we live in with like alternative facts and stuff like that. This is this is sort of looking at it from another another angle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. If anybody's got any cool stories there, please uh, uh, write or call in. We've also got the you know speak pipe on the website, and we've got our um, voicemail line still. Our lonely two one three two actors call us. Our call lonely us. lonely uh, uh, call in line with uh, tumbleweeds rolling through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we do have to boogie. So, uh, what is your pick of the week, dude? So, my pick of the week is uh, a website slash blog slash app slash uh, uh, contest. I don't. There's, there's so many aspects to this thing. It's really cool. It's called I M, but the I is spelled E Y E, as in the uh, anatomical part of your body, and the M is E M. So E Y E E M dot com, and they have an app. Uh, that you can download for your devices as well. And they have a blog. It's all about photography. Everything is about photography. And they don't discriminate, so you don't have to have a nice camera in order to be a part of the, their website. But here's just some of the aspects. The blog will teach you how to take better photos and edit them better. Uh, the website itself has a social aspect to it. The website and the app has a social aspect to it where you can um, basically connect with other people, other photographers. You can like their photos. They can like your photos. They can comment on them, etc. And you can share them. They have missions, like these little oh, quests like that, that you can go on. Yeah. And you can take pictures of the specific sort of you know, mission that they that they uh, are asking for. So whether it's like a journalistic photograph, uh, journalistic photograph, or a nature photograph, or whatever photograph, they'll send you out on these missions. And then those missions will st- will often grow into contests. And mm-hmm. every year, this company does a big contest where they um, do they basically give awards to all of these photographers based on their photographs. And some of them you can only submit like a single photograph. Some of them you can fit multiple. You can um, submit multiple photographs um, and there's a marketplace built in where people can pay you to use your photograph as a stock photograph so they yeah. take care of all the copywriting and all of that stuff and then um, people can actually you can submit a photo that you've uploaded for any of these other purposes and there's just a switch that says do you want this to be allowed in the marketplace or not and if you say yes huh. then other people can come and actually purchase the rights to use your photo in, say, like a magazine or something like and that. And do they handle the payment for that? And yeah, it's all done through the app. Yeah, exactly. So it's really cool. I just I stumbled upon it because I read a story about their most recent contest, and I missed the deadline by a few weeks, and I was so bummed yeah. um, because I had just submitted all of these photographs to yeah. the contest at my at my job that I've been posting on social media. So I was like, oh, I just missed it. But I was like, well, now I have a whole year to kind of, you know, take better photos, learn more, read more about it uh, from their blog, and and kind of check out other people's photos. And it's really interesting to see people's different visual styles and, like, what people focus on when they take pictures and what kind of filters and and edits they'll add to them and and that kind of thing. So you have people on there that are using high-end professional cameras, then you have people using the best – what is it? uh, The best camera is the one you have with you. Thank you, Chase Jarvis. Uh, the iPhone or, or smartphone or whatever in your pocket. So it's a really, it's just a really cool comprehensive sort of photography, I don't know, thing. Yeah. It's really cool. And you've been getting more and more into photography uh, lately, and I've, I've been following your photos on, on social media, and they're awesome. Yeah, it is a direct uh, result uh, of, of, of doing, um, doing so much talking about photography and videography at, yeah. at my job. Badass man, yeah. that's so cool. Apple's yeah. such a great company to be working for. Um, what is your pick? I thought wasn't this your pick of the week last week? Uh, no, I talked about it. Oh, that's um, right, that's right. But uh, I'll I'll keep it brief because we've I've talked about it a couple times already. But the book Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari, who wrote the book Sapiens that I raved about a while back. Well, Homo Deus is basically the next step, I guess. He, if Sapiens is about the past seventy thousand years of human culture and and history and it takes us from you know the time of like homo sapiens and neanderthals and why homo sapiens became the predominant you know human species to sort of persist 
uh, and, and become what we are today. Homo Deus is about what the future may hold. Mm-hmm. And it's a very unsettling read. I am fascinated by this stuff. It's really the ble- it's where culture meets humanity meets technology. And it's like, what's going to happen there? It talks a lot about, as I, we talked about last episode, algorithms and artificial intelligence and how we're creating this entire class of people who are going to be basically unemployable and how like the strength of nations used to be based on the strength of their population now that's not a thing anymore because we can turn off entire cities with the press of a button i mean it's it's wow. it is a fascinating book and he really goes deep into some issues that i think will really activate some people because he he goes for the jugular he like talks about how like all human beings, all biological creatures are just algorithms. We understand this now, that there's no such thing as free will. We're all a slave to hormones and conditioning. And the soul is just this romantic idea and that it doesn't really exist. And <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's like, but, and the whole time you're like, I don't know if I agree with that dude, but you're reading it and then you're like, I got, but I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> I have no argument, but, and then, but I also have no soul. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> So it's a very, very, very compelling book. I, I just definitely top five books I've ever read. Uh, right up there with the first book he wrote, which is Sapien. So if you're into that kind of stuff and you just want to ask the big questions and you're curious about where we might be headed as a culture, um, you know, and, and the things that we hold dear, the belief systems that we hold dear now, and how they might be just completely dismantled in the next ten years by some new technology and some new government structure because of all the things at play, all the variables, climate change, you know, immigration, like just you name it, man. Technology is the big disruptor. And it's a really mind blowing, disturbing but fascinating mm. look at where we might be headed. So wow. I, I I can't um, I can't recommend it enough, man. Uh, wow. Ten out of ten stars. I'm giving it ten stars. Don't uh, give it ten stars. Yeah, star. Homo Deus. Turn but, it up to eleven. Yeah. <laughs> you all know a Harari. Uh, links to that and to I, I am on our website, so check those out. We got a boogie, so let's get out of here. All right, today's episode of Inside Acting was produced and hosted by yours truly, AJ Meyer, and of course Trevor Alget. Jen Levins is our production coordinator. Gadali Gubrick is our marketing and web director. Deborah Smith is our community manager. Grace Gordon is our director of public relations, and Fern Lim designed our logo. Uh, we both contributed to the editing and mixing of today's episode and composed, and Trevor, uh, I, I, oh, oh man, I almost slipped. See, you got me excited last episode. You, you almost said I composed our theme and interview music, but actually that's, uh, that's Trevor. Awesome. You can sign up for our weekly email dispatch and listen to all of our episodes, all 286 of them now, over at our website, insideacting.net. You can also find us on social media. We're basically inside acting uh, everywhere on social media. And uh, you can also find us wherever you get your podcasts. I think we've covered almost all the stores and outlets <laughs> stores and, and, things. and aggregators. Uh, if you've got a minute, iTunes is the big kahuna. If you guys could leave us a, a positive review on the iTunes store if you enjoy what we do, that helps so much more than you realize. So, so if you've got a few minutes and you want to help out, that's a great way to do it. Special thanks to our sponsors, Rehearsal Pro and vo 2 go com, And thanks to you, our listeners. Visit our website where you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter and get links to everything we talked about in this episode. And if you'd like, you can support the continued production of the show with either a one-time financial contribution or an ongoing contribution as part of our membership. Visit InsideActing.net to learn more and show us some love. And that does it for episode 286. 286 episodes uh, of Inside Acting. Thank you for listening, guys. Really appreciate it. It's an honor to be in your ears every week. Uh, We'll see you next time, and in the meantime, 